Thank you, Professor Sam Wong, give us a wonderful um, presentation on the overall picture of the, the floating structures and potential and uh, the big picture. So my presentation is really will be focusing on Hong Kong to have a look at how the floating structures can help Hong Kong and uh, increase Hong Kong's capacity uh, for sustainable development and uh, livability uh, with a reduced environment impact, construction time and, uh, and cost. So my presentation will be uh, in four parts, uh, very quickly some local context uh, in relation to Hong Kong and uh, how the floating structure FST in short is going to play a role in, in all this development and also the scientific and engineering challenges um, associated with uh, FST and finally look at beyond Hong Kong. Um, the local context, so look at the housing and livability and Hong Kong 2030 plus vision. So I believe everyone will agree with me that uh, the housing crisis in Hong Kong uh, is one of the most uh, pressing issues that the city is facing. Um, if you look at the statistic in uh, 2011, uh, almost uh, half of Hong Kong city residents live in public apartments or residence and because they're, they're unable to purchase a private housing. Uh, Hong Kong's per capita residential space uh, is less than 13 square meters. Uh, if you look at the livability, um, we still have a lot of room to improve. Uh, we're ranking 77th most livable locations in the world. If you look at the Hong Kong uh, 2030 vision, um, the three building blocks uh, in this vision. The first one is to embrace new economic op opportunities. And this is quite obvious and uh, in collaboration with uh, men and, and is strongly encouraged uh, these days. That will bring a lot of opportunity for Hong Kong. And the second one is about capacity uh, for growth. And it's more important, it's about a sustainable growth, not just about the growth and uh, about what is good for us. And we also need to think about what happens to our future generations. Uh, the third one is about livability, and that is very important for uh, Hong Kong, so we can attract more people coming to Hong Kong to uh, help the economy. So to fulfill the Hong Kong 2030 plus vision, uh, we must overcome uh, the land shortage in Hong Kong, which is estimated to around 3,000 hectares. Um, so how can the floating structure technology come to play uh, in all this context? We need to look at also the traditional the land reclamation method as well. <clears throat> so the possible solution um, for the land shortage, uh, overcome the land shortage, um, a list of possible solutions are suggested by the government, but among them, more than one third will be achieved by land uh, recla uh, reclamation uh, in the following possible locations. The first one will be the, the Kao Yi Chao artificial island, uh, approximately 1,000 hectares, followed by the He Lin Chao artificial island, about 700, and then a few smaller ones uh, like uh, Long Kuan and Tan and Sunny Bay, and also Ma Liao Sui. Now, the traditional land recommendation has played a very important role and will continue to play a very important role for urban development uh, in the coastal densely populated city like Hong Kong. In fact, about 6% of Hong Kong's land was reclaimed, which is now a home for about a third of the, the population. Um, the era increases certainly the per capita living spaces, uh, it reduces the population uh, density and support essential facilities and so on. However, the solution also attracts some criticism, like uh, you know, threats to the marine environment, um, the high cost and the lengthy construction period it takes quite a long time to get the, the foundation and the, the land to settle. And after you finish, you still dig the hole and build the construction again, and also the shortage of cleaning materials. Um, so that, that become a quite uh, an issue. Now, to enhance livability requires a certain percentage of land uh, to be used for public uh, facilities, um, for communities. And this kind of city are often not high-rise buildings. So a recent good example is the West Kowloon uh, culture district shown uh, in the picture here, which is about a 40 hectares of reclaimed land uh, with a one-off upfront endowment uh, of Hong Kong, uh, about 22 billion Hong Kong dollars. 
So this type of um, building area and uh, does not contain high-rise buildings and uh, the FST could uh, play a role to build such kind of um, a space. Uh, we call it blue and green belt or blue and green um, area. Blue because it's come from the ocean and green because uh, sustainability and also because environment friendly. So we strongly believe that uh, FSD uh, will add high value to tra traditional ARR. We're not arguing that we're trying to get rid of traditional land uh, reclamation method, but uh, the FSD certainly will add high value to that and to increase Hong Kong's capacity for sustainable growth and livability. So what can we build? I mean, there's a lot of things you can build on this blue and green belt and parks, you're walking, uh, running tracks, you know, sports areas, uh, children playground uh, for families, artistic sculptures for people to enjoy, the shoe ground like the one in Singapore, and the waste treatment facilities, museum, restaurant, and swimming pools, and so on. Um, so what are the scientific and engineering challenges? Um, first, uh, I believe will be the materials. Um, because we're talking about uh, offshore uh, structure, we talk about a very complicated loading and also very harsh corrosive environment. So we need to develop green and high performance construction materials, such as, for example, the seawater, sea sand, uh, ultra high performance concrete, FRP, stainless steel, ultra high strength steel, and to understand their long-term performance under such a complicated loading and harsh environment. We also need to develop um, biodegradable, energy-saving and eco-friendly materials, such as lightweight eco-friendly materials. And we can also utilize the byproducts or waste from construction industry, agriculture industry, and also use multifunctional coating uh, to enhance durability and energy saving. Um, construction technology will be very important. We, we really need to develop intelligent devices for automated construction site management, like digital trains and MIC, uh, modular integrated construction, to meet the needs of rapid and precise on-site um, assembly because of so many different parameters, uh, like different uh, water levels, type of superstructures, and, and also to satisfy their functionality. <clears throat> Stability definitely is a, a very important uh, issue, uh, a challenge, because of the dynamic movement due to typhoon and wind, the wave and type of loading um, during the construction stage and also the service stage. So I want to make sure that we have sufficient monitoring and to minimize such movement. Uh, we often are doing very well in the resistance of structure, but uh, we lack of understanding of the loading side, which is quite important in this application. Sustainability definitely is, is a challenge. We need to consider ecology and environmental impact. Why, what happened to the marine life uh, underneath the, the floating structure, the life cycle analysis, you know, the renewable energy um, created by solar wind and wave and waste treatment and so on. We believe that the demo project is also very important. If you can run one in Hong Kong to showcase uh, the developed FST, that will certainly uh, increase the confidence and acceptance by the public. Now let's look beyond Hong Kong and look at um, the, the Great Bay Area or other coastal cities in mainland China and also the countries along the Belt and Road Initiative. There are so many different types of space could be created using the floating structures. Um, Professor Sam Wang already gave a very good uh, overall picture. Um, you can also build um, uh, terminals and uh, the different farms, uh, tourism and also including emergency basis for natural disaster relief, like earthquake, pandemic, et cetera. And all this will contribute to the blue economy and the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So this is a picture of uh, Hong Kong land till tomorrow. And if you look at, um, at the Hong Kong and you have the Northern Metropolis Developing Area, which will happen soon, and also the Eastern Knowledge and Technology Corridor and the Waste Economy Corridor, and in those areas, you will have uh, opportunity to apply FST to create some kind of space. Um, if you look at uh, the Great Bay Area, um, the coastal cities like um, Zhuhai, Shenzhen, um, Jiangmen, and Zhongshan, et cetera. And also, if you look at the map of China, you go up uh, along the coast, you have cities like Xiamen, Fuzhou, Wenzhou, Ningbo, Shanghai, Qingdao, Tianjin, and Dalian. So it's huge opportunities along those areas. For FST. 
if you look at the, a bigger picture, the Belt and Road Initiative route, um, the one down the bottom in blue color, uh, the marine time route, and you can see that it will go through a lot of uh, crystal um, coastal uh, areas, um, which where uh, FST can play a very important role. Even the top one, the red color one, the Arctic route, and we believe that FST will play an important role as well. So how can we make the happen? And uh, I think we need combined efforts from universities, uh, government agencies, industry partners, and consulting companies, and also plus international collaboration. So at the Poly U, that so we already started uh, preliminary research and uh, in this area uh, through the Research Institute of Land and Space, and also Research Institute for Sustainable Urban Development. We're also talking to other research institutes at Poly U and to conduct interdisciplinary research to push the FST to the next level. But today, and uh, Professor Dai Jiang will give a, uh, a brief talk about uh, preliminary work will already happen here at PolyU in terms of innovative and environment-friendly construction technology and materials. So with that, um, sorry, I speak a bit faster because of time, but uh, I will stop here and thank you very much. Please.